Hello everyone, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and today we're going to be talking about the energies of 2020 to 2024. Now before we have that discussion, please understand that time is not linear, okay? <laughs> so when we say 2020 to 2024, let's not get caught up in our ego consciousness and really track those years. We are going to uh, be having kind of a density blast moment, but the reason why I'm saying, remember the time is not linear, you might hear some people say, oh, it's 2020 to 2025. We've had a lot of channelers bringing through some really incredible information. I encourage you to go check those out. You know, of course, listen to your instincts about who to pick up on, <laughs> okay? Um, other people have been talking about 2020 to 2034. So let's first talk about what happened in 2012. If you notice for 2020, there hasn't been as much hype. There hasn't been as much magical thinking. Um, it hasn't been so much escapism because that was definitely something that was going on in 2012 where everyone was just like, oh, I can't wait for the countdown. I can't wait for this to happen. That way I could poof off this earth and be done, right? And then 2020 came and a lot of us, me included, oh, like some crazy stuff was happening and I had a major spiritual death. If you want to know about what spiritual death is and at least my experience with it, let me know down below in the comments and I can make that video for you as well. So essentially coming into 2020, this is a time where we are not doing this whole, taking messages and processing it through our ego and trying to make it mean something. I remember going back to 2012, that was something I was doing. If I would get a message from Gabriel, I would twist that message around in my ego to have it be a nice, neat little story. We saw a lot of people who were like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna be going off in 2020. I mean, people really thought that their bodies were going to evaporate and they were gonna go off into another dimension. And I had a little hard time with that because I was like, I don't know that we're exactly there. <laughs> right? Doesn't seem like we're exactly there. But I wanna make it clear that 2012 was actually an important opening. We all learned something, whether you're aware of it or not. And if you recognize just how far a lot of people have come, I mean, crystals have become very, very mainstream. We have people out there really, you know, trying to spread some information about crystals, um, you know, more earth awareness, more kindness towards others. We still have people who are trying to be the rebels, but again, I will get into the uprising of the rebellion uh, with this. And that's part of that 2020 energy as well. This time around, hopefully a lot of us are far better prepared for an opening, if that's how you want to think of it. Um, and some people really think that this is going to be a time where we get a lot of downloads. So many things can happen, but I want you all to be prepared in your higher consciousness. Let's be very, very clear about this. If you are somebody who is still trying to manipulate the energies to get what you want, and you're not doing it in the highest good of everyone involved, you better play catch up here. You've got like three more months. I'm posting, well, I'm recording this on 1010, okay, <laughs> of 2019, and you have a couple of months now to catch up and really go within. And you gotta go into your heart. You really have to find the center of your heart. If you do not, okay, you are, if you're placing all your happiness still on things that are happening outside of you, if you are still placing your happiness based on how much you get, what you look like in this world, this is not going to be a good time for you. So let's start at what most humans might be witnessing. This is not meant to be predictive. This is an energy that I am reading, okay? So it could literally play out like the examples I'm about to give, or it could have a deeper, more internal kind of interpretation. Ready? First and foremost, density blast. Density blast is what happened back in 2012. Uh, you know, things that weren't working anymore started to fall apart. A lot of people on a personal level started realizing that they had to make a shift. I ended up quitting my job, you know, shortly after, you know, just, I think it was in 2013, I ended up quitting my job, moving on to something else. For 2020, it's sort of, for some of you, you might be experiencing major personal shifts, but this on a grand scale is going to be nothing seems to be working anymore. And we might see a lot of fighting, okay? Why would that be? Again, it's the density blast. People's egos are coming up on one another, yes? We also have people struggling 
in themselves to bring forward light because the more the personal density blast is going to be the light trying to come up and what's it going to do it's going to illuminate it's going to hit on all these things that have always bothered you so if you hang on to your wounds if you hang on to your victim mentality if you think that whatever happened in the past still defines you and therefore informs every one of your choices that's going to be very apparent to you yes we might see an uprise in depression, anxiety, as people just aren't handling this very well and they're wanting to hang on to the old way. We talk about this all the time, this is not new, <laughs> all right? So be aware of that. If you know you have unprocessed traumas, make sure you are getting help, make sure you are you know, giving yourself some spiritual practice, having some awareness there. Do not put this on angels and other light beings to come and heal you. What, what, what now, what? We can't lean on our angels? Yes, you can, but it's not up to them to heal you. We once had this very sort of, I'm, I'm trying to be nice here. We had this perception of the angels at one time as, oh, my angels will save me. Oh, my angels will. Well, it's time to understand that the angels are not here to live for you. They are not here to tell you what to do. That's why they don't. That's why people get so shocked when they get an angelic reading and they're like, the angels aren't telling me what to do. What? <laughs> they're here to help guide you so that you can make your own choices so that you can evolve. You know, and we've been using that word for a while now, ascension, right? You can spiritually awaken and start to integrate more. There are people out there talking about this, and I think it's so beautiful. Integrate all of you into a fifth dimensional energy. It's not existing necessarily above you. And I've heard people out there say this as well, and I just love that they're putting it this way. It's so true. It's not above you. It's already within you. So this is, you know, we want to think of ascension, but it's not really ascension. It's more activation, right? It's already there. It's just been sitting there waiting to be remembered. All right. And if you are treating this like a game, if you're treating this like a race, I, I want to give an example here. I went and I met somebody and I sat down with them and this person immediately started to basically brag about how much she knew about spirituality. And I just sat and played witness. And everything that I tried to add to the conversation, she would diminish, right? And then she starts talking about how she uses her tarot cards to channel angels and basically that she's just better at it than anybody else that's ever walked the face of the earth, <laughs> right? So I was like, that's a great story. It brought a tear to my eye. I'm gonna walk away from this. Nice knowing you. Um, you know, and I wasn't trying to judge, but we. I'm gonna do some more information on this and videos and maybe even blogs, um, more writings about being an empath and us trusting our instincts more. So, if you're treating it like that, like this awakening, this uh, you know activation, if we want to call it that, is some sort of competition. Whoa, you better watch out. 2020 is gonna be a wrecking ball for you. Everything you thought you knew, boom, done. Okay. <laughs> and it could come maybe in a grand sense, or it could just be, you know, somebody put you in your place and somebody calls you out on your ego or something like that. So on a smaller scale, it feels like there's kind of like, nah, 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 you know, because everybody's trying to uh, face their traumas. They are trying to uh, heal. You know, I, I hate using that word in this context because people hang on to that. I'm just working on my healing journey. I'm just trying to, you know, no, you're being human. Okay. And we all are human and everybody is constantly doing a cell turnover. If you want to think of it like that. Okay. Um, everybody has had their traumas, especially if you are an empath, it's typical for an empath to have come into this world, uh, seeing a lot, experiencing a lot right? Because how can you help others? How can you really develop that empathy if you don't really know what, what that pain is like, right? So people, for whatever reason, again, we could get into that in another video, in their soul's contract, choose to have those experiences. So we're going to have everybody in 2020 feeling aggravated, feeling agitated, feeling like the rebel. So part of that rebel, the rebellion, or someone feeling like they need to be a rebel, it would be people who are finally how should I say this? They're finally setting boundaries when you should have been doing that all along or could have been doing that all along. You know, maybe you just didn't realize it. And I know it's not really fair of me to say could, should. 
I'm still human. This is the language we have. Hopefully you can, you know, still take it for what it's worth. Uh, so we have these people who now all of the stuff that they haven't been dealing with is right in their face. There's no more escaping it. It's here. So there, there might be a feeling of being raw, um, not being able to handle things, not wanting to be fair. And then we do still have people who have denied their souls, okay? They're denying their soul light. And so they claim to be on team darkness or whatever. And really, you know, I've been around these people and I'm like, God, I wish you could see just how beautiful you are. I wish you could see how lovable you are because that's why I'm here. If you were really dark, I wouldn't even have perceived you. We would have just crossed paths and kept on our way, <laughs> all right? So I'm gonna have a lot of those people coming up and trying to be very, very counterculture. But really, they're dealing with their own wounding, right? Because if you talk to a lot of these people, the reason why they're going counterculture is because they've been rejected by it. And now I'm talking about not everybody who's counterculture. Some people would say that they are, and it's because, you know, they're, they're like, oh, I don't like the establishment. I don't like how government is. I don't like how our banking system is. That I get. Okay, fine. But I'm talking about people who maybe feel like they're not, again, not lovable. And so there's a complete rejection of anything good or anything that would feel like light. So... Be ready for that. Be ready for people to throw their images in your face. Be ready for people to try to get under your skin, okay? There's gonna be an uprise in competition, okay? There's going to be people, that's them trying to hang on to the old way because they feel themselves slipping. And really what it is is, I, I imagine this is almost like a baby coming out of the birth canal, right? Like you're all warm and cozy and all, what's happening? I'm getting sucked out somewhere. <laughs> and like something's happening. And yes, we could see this as being born or maybe what is fairer to say is you're being born into the next chapter. Yes. Will this happen? Boom, 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 right at 2020. No, remember time is not linear. This is just sort of a, you know, a blanket statement here, right? It could be happening at different times for you. For you, maybe it doesn't happen until 2021. Maybe it doesn't happen until 2050. I don't know. But right now, certain people are going to be going through this, but definitely the earth is going to be doing this. It's happened in, since like 2017, I want to say. So there's been this sort of wave of action going on. So be ready for that. How do you get ready? Please listen to this. Please share this video with people because people think that, um, you know, they, they get scared, they hunker down, they're like, can't wait until it's over. Don't stop your life. <laughs> Don't stop your life for a Mercury retrograde or a Saturn return or what are you doing? No, you're here to live and everything that happens is beautiful. And you might scoff at that. You might say, no, I've had horrible things happen to me. We all have. We all have. All right. We don't need to carry those things anymore. We don't need to live in those bad memories. The lessons came, we learned them, let's move on to the next thing. So awareness is going to be how you can be prepared. Self-awareness, plain witness to the world without judgment. This is gonna be hard for us because we, it's, it's a protection mechanism, right? We see this a lot of times with people who, again, they feel like people are going to hurt them or something like that. So they're always judging others before they could be judged. Uh, or they judge others so that the attention goes towards that person and it's off of them, <laughs> all right? This is what we see in bullies. This is what those, what those kind of people do. So we're going to need to have that self-awareness, again, playing witness to the world and just seeing how things are changing without the ego getting in there and flipping things around. Now, what does that mean? That means, aha, I knew it. I see right through you. That's the ego. All right. I wanted to be right. And look, I'm, I'm right. Or whatever. Or people um, standing up and fighting because they're wrong and they knew they were wrong. It's not about that. It's not about looking at the world and trying to place more judgment on it. It's just watching how things are changing and shifting. This is where that competition comes back in right? Where everyone's trying to compete with one another. If you have somebody who is laughing at your belief system, if there's somebody who doesn't want to take you seriously, if we see an uprise in personality disorders, again, I think that's more because of the awareness around it. So a lot of that's going to be coming out. This can feel very exhausting. It's the same kind of thing. It's like, oh, I cannot hear one more thing on the news, <laughs> right? Or I, every time I think I've made it or I am, you know, healed or whatever, something else comes forward that I have to deal with. 
please take care of yourselves. This is really, really important, okay? So awareness is the number one thing that we can do to make sure that we are getting ready for this kind of energy. And a subset of that would be the non-judgment, <laughs> right? So then we get into this idea of two, get ready to be flexible. If you are very, very solid in your beliefs, it's like this and there's nothing else. How much are you missing in your life? How many beautiful moments? How many beautiful people? How many moments and, and opportunities of growth are you missing because you think you know it all? Because you think the way that you've set up your life is it, <laughs> right? For, for those of you out there who are like, this is my career, this is my purpose, and that's all there is. Well, I got a reading back in 2008 and they said my purpose was X, Y, and Z and now you find yourself doing something completely different, you're not gonna, you know, that's what was right for you and for who you were and the vibration you were in, in that time. That may not work now, okay? As a matter of fact, it won't work now. And so we're going to have to be flexible, evolve. Uh, again, I, I can already feel the exhaustion coming out of people and the frustration, the frustration of, oh, it took me all this time to study this topic and now we're changing. <laughs> now it's this. I'm totally prepared for that. I'm in social media. It's changing constantly, right? So I'm ready to have to move and shake or move on to something else or whatever the case may be. I'm just staying very, very open, which is number three remain open remain open to what you are seeing remain open to what you are hearing and understand that you don't have to define yourselves uh, under these limited terms right so there's going to be a blasting of that as well um, i feel the example of sexuality coming out there are so many labels that people could put on themselves and if that makes you feel comfortable by all means remain open in your heart to not feel like you have to put things in a box same thing with a career i am a healer i am a messenger i am you know a stockbroker i am an accountant you know whatever whatever you feel like you need to be boxed in by you're going to probably with that openness start going it doesn't really matter the label does not matter yeah, I work at a at an accountancy. That's the job that I do, but does it have to be any more than that, right? <laughs> so remain open to new ideas and new ways of seeing yourselves and try not to get hung up on that ego consciousness need to label everything, all right? So number four, the way that you can get ready, of course, is through self-care, lots of self-care. Not in this whiny kind of way of like, oh, I'm so sensitive. Oh, I'm so this, I'm so that. You know, I have to, I, I, I'm so sensitive to everything. I can't eat this or I can't eat that. If something doesn't work for you food wise, okay. But whining about it is something else. That is an ego thing. That is your ego trying to get, you know, it's almost like playing victim. And if you want to fight me on that, see you in 2020, honey. <laughs> see you in 2020. No one's dealing with that anymore. No one is going to tiptoe around that anymore okay so when i talk about self-care part of that self-care is not taking in people's opinions of you not letting people define you because a lot of times people will do that just out of their own insecurities again judge others before they can judge you so it's not taking that in it's not letting other people tell you how you should live and you have you have a chance every single day to move your body, to feed your body in the way that's right for you, not what everybody tells you or what's trendy, and to meditate, okay? This is absolutely huge. We're not talking about meditation to draw somebody in or to, you know, you, you know, these things are not, you know, wanting love is not bad. Wanting money is not bad. Wanting a nice house is not bad. However, when we're talking about meditation, this is a meditation that needs to get you connected from brain to heart, Okay, getting those two brains online with one another and being in the heart space and now viewing life from that lens. Now, Drumvalo Melchizedek, no, I'm not going to spell that. <laughs> I can't, okay. <laughs> if, you, if you just Google it, okay, Flower of Life, he brought all that forward, brought uh, forward a lot of information about uh, what they say, they call it the Merkaba, I always say Merkaba, but you know, a lot of that information coming forward so just go google it you'll see what i'm talking about but he actually said in one of his courses you can't be in the brain 
convincing yourself that you're in the heart, which is where a lot of people are, right? You actually have to come into the heart space. If you say, Michelle, I don't know how to do that, you know, if you want me to put more work into courses and get those out there to help you prepare for that, let me know. You guys know I'm, I'm here to serve you in this way. I'm here to bring messages forward, to bring information forward as I learn it, as I understand it, all right, and as I process it. So if that's something that you think is helpful, leave your comment down below. I'll put a course up, okay? But really, if you just want to try to do it on your own, it's meditating and getting into the heart space. You can work with Archangel Raphael. He can help you get there. Archangel Shamuel can help you get into the higher heart, right? Or what some people call the tiny space of the heart. I believe that that is Dream Velomo Keys deck as well. So getting into that heart space. From here, what you are going to find in 2020, beginning in 2020, probably going far beyond that, is that all that stuff that you really thought was important, you don't care about anymore. <laughs> that person you wanted back as a love partner, you forget about them. It's just now you're on a different you know, continuum. So it doesn't even matter anymore. The job that you thought really defined you, the thing that really uh, you, maybe you thought made you stand out in this world that gave you self-worth, you realize it doesn't have that kind of spiritual clout. It does not matter, <laughs> right? And you start moving on to work that you can really connect to and that really serves the highest good of everyone involved. And that's what uh, this higher consciousness work through uh, you know meditation, moving your body uh, in an, a beautifully energetic, freeing way, like through yoga, tai chi, you know, whatever works for you, uh, you know, releasing all of that energy, it connects back into what we were saying before, that awareness starts coming out that I don't have to just work at half capacity from the intellect. Oh, <laughs> there's this whole other part of me that's in my heart space. And now everything that you do, hopefully, if you allow it to be activated, again, you'll have your rebels who want to go to the dark side because they're terrified. That's the only reason why people would dare go to where light doesn't exist. It's out of fear, right? Perhaps a fear of being rejected, as we said before. But once you're in that space, you know that joy is the way. You know that the heart is the, the tunnel, if you want to see it that way, to your truest essence, to your soul. And now you might find that you're more interested in serving in a way that doesn't serve your ego, right? I'm the best angel card reader out there. <laughs> I'm not. Um, and even if I were, it doesn't matter. I mean, none of that matters. I am the most successful blah, 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 blah in the spiritual community ever. Those people, like we're not even going to see them anymore. I'm about to go to a convention this weekend. And it's always hit or miss when I walk in there. I wouldn't say it's high vibrational. It's not. It's a lot of people who are, you know, on their ego pursuits. They, you know, clicked into something that they think makes them mysterious and weird, right? <laughs> and they're trying to turn a living uh, out of it. So they show up at these places. Sometimes I walk in and I meet like the one person that you can have a conversation with. Um, but, you know, it's that kind of stuff that's going to be going away. So if you are one of those people out there, you have completely manipulated this market you treat it as a market, you have manipulated this industry, you're going to be found out and you're going to be done. Okay. And the people that are authentic, true, they want to serve. They want to help people because we know that that's what our purpose is. Well, we're not going to become Oprah. Okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we got an Oprah. We don't need another one. Right. But you know, we will, we will find our way and people are going to start gravitating to those who can actually help okay and this idea of and i heard this a lot on some of my videos i'm doing things for myself now and i'm doing this and this and this and that's wonderful because there was a time i said it myself as a messenger i was like don't lean on people so much <laughs> like you know and so people sort of overcorrected as humans do and they went off and now they're in another ego pursuit of i don't need anybody I'm gonna, so hopefully in 2020, we're gonna have a lot of upheaval. There's going to be a lot of things crumbling and people are trying to hang on and they're screaming and fighting. Um, it might feel like we get a little more divided before we can come back together. But on the individual level, it's dropping that ego and admitting, hey, we're all in this together. And what your perspective is might help trigger an understanding in me and maybe I can reciprocate in some way. All right, so we're gonna start understanding that we need to work 
together <laughs> a little bit more. So the next thing that you can do to be very prepared, right, is to always be coming from a space of love. Remember we said getting into that heart space. That means it, it's kind of a culmination of everything that we just talked about, loving yourself, but not in an ego way, in like a, you know, I deserve love, I can be my own source of love kind of way, <laughs> right? And, you know, approaching others with a bit of love. One of the most challenging things that I came across, as I was saying earlier, you know, I came across some people who chose darkness. They chose um, a lack of light because they're terrified and they just want to, you know, hide in the closet a little bit or in the corner if you want to see it like that. And they don't want anybody bothering them. They don't want anybody bringing some love to them. And as hurtful as that situation was, I saw it for what it was. I trusted my instincts. I broke ties. I set a boundary and that didn't go well because it doesn't go well with people like that. And I backed away and I still had to approach that with love, right? So even though they're off doing their thing, they're making their choices, I'm in a loving space right here, right? So this means no self-hatred, no putting yourselves down. I was recording something one time and I realized I'm constantly, I'm, I'm always talking in the passive voice. I think it's this. I mean, I don't know, but I think it might be this. And I remember I stopped myself and I'm like, I do know what it is. I am well versed in this. I have studied, I've experienced, I know what I know. <laughs> so why am I saying, I don't know, kind of maybe sorta a little bit. I don't know. Do you agree with me? I don't know. Uh, and I stopped my recording and I did it again. And I said it in the way that I knew it to be true, <laughs> right? So this is a big thing. That's, that's that self-love. And if you catch yourselves apologizing a lot or saying, I don't know, is it, is it maybe? And suddenly, you know, people are going to jump on that, especially if they're operating from their pain body and they're sort of short-circuiting. They're going to jump on that and take advantage of it, right? And now they're taking advantage of your compassion. This is a common problem with empaths. So if you're coming from that space of love, that means doing things out of love. That means if you hate your job, if you can find something that you do there for the love of it, okay, get out of your egos, get out of your egos, right? If you can find a way to do stuff out of love, you will recommit to whatever it is that you've chosen or you'll choose another path, okay? This is coming from a space of love with your love partners, with your kids, with your friends, with your colleagues, with your neighbors, with the stranger in the street. I just, I'll give you another example. I just went to the zoo. <laughs> we have a great zoo here. And for the very first time, when I went to go show my little card and my ID and everything, the person behind, uh, in the, behind the window wasn't very nice and actually had a real attitude problem. And normally that would aggravate me. I would be like, why can't everyone just be nice? Can't we all just get along? <laughs> you know, kind of thing. And the people in front of me actually got pretty aggravated by this person. But here's me. I, and I was observing this for myself. Remember, this whole 2020 energy is going to be all about observing, you know, how you react to things and checking yourself maybe or going, oh, okay, cool. You know, all right, well, look at that. I, I, I wasn't triggered by that, you know. Um, so I stood there and I just didn't take it in. I observed it, but I did not allow myself to get invested. And she continued on with her attitude. And she, you know, she's like, just you today? Yep, just me. And then she had, you'll need this ticket and blah, 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 blah. I was like, okay, thank you so much. She's like, have a nice day. Like something broke in her. And it wasn't like I'm being codependent with this stranger and going in and trying to save her or trying to lift her up and make her feel good and just comfort her. I did nothing of the sort. I just stayed in my authentic, loving energy space, not invested, just doing my thing, and I gave her a smile and something cracked, okay? That's what we're talking about. If you need me to go into that a little bit more in another video, again, leave all your comments down below about what you're gonna need to get prepared for 2020. <sighs> what else can we say? Let's talk about some of the changes we might be seeing in the world. We are going, guys, nothing is going to be the same, okay? Everything is going to ask us to make adjustments. And that is something that you should definitely be, I would say, prepared for. It goes back to that flexibility thing. But don't sit there and get all scared, okay? Don't put that negative energy around it. It's okay. 
we've been waiting for this. This is what we've been wanting. We've been wanting things to be different and now we're seeing that we can get there. Now we're seeing that uh, when we're coming from what is good for a higher consciousness, what is coming from a state of love, what is happening, uh, you know, in our world politically or with religions or, you know, anything of the sort, we're going to start seeing that that doesn't resonate because it separates us. I'll give some examples here in just a moment. But that that separation, it, it's like wanting, like, you know, you ever get to that space where you just, unfortunately, this happens during tragedies, but um, when people are finally at their best and they look at somebody that normally they would consider their enemy just for the, the thrill and energy of competition, right? Uh, and they suddenly want to reach out to that person. This, I think we have the potential here to do this over the next several years without having to be triggered by a tragedy. That's the kind of thing that we're talking about here. It's just not going to work anymore. And I'm picturing, you know, people who uh, like different sports teams, right? I have been unwillingly in sports bars because of some guy I'm dating uh, <laughs> who makes me go to these stupid sports bars. And, you know, they're guys that are dressed up in, you know, rival teams or whatever. And they're like going to fight one another. Like they're going to punch one another over a game. But have a seat. You know, this is ridiculous. And and this is that kind of thing where someone might still be in that energy and be like, yo, man, you know, like that's my team. Don't you say that about my team or whatever. And somebody else is like, come on, man. We came here to have fun. That's what this was about. We've lost touch with that. Right. Um, the other thing, too, obviously, is politics. We're going to see that <laughs> we can't even take people seriously when they are completely polarized. Those people won't even be heard. They'll just be screaming in an empty tunnel, right? And nobody's there to listen to them. No one is there to validate them. No one is there to quiver in their presence. We just are. And it's not done with our noses in the air or saying, I'm super ascended. You better stop. <laughs> you better stop. The second you say that, you are not, all right? You are not in your wisdom, y you know. Well, anyway, I'll be good. So we're going to see a lot of people just not taking it anymore, but it doesn't, some people are going to get out there and try to create a war. They're going to, and I hope that we'll all be centered enough. And that's what it is about being energetically centered and working on what is important, which is uh, getting back into that higher consciousness, integrating the fifth dimensional energies into our bodies for the lower chakras, the higher chakras, our, our whole complete being. And, you know, allowing that to light our way, working in a beautiful, friendly manner with one another, right? Uh, so the people that are still very divided, we're just not going to put up with it anymore. We're just not going to feed them anymore, right? And yeah, the, the ego and the spiritual community, I'm, I'm going to be very curious to see what happens. <laughs> um, this isn't going to just be like, oh, now we wake up and it's light and airy, fairy, fluffy, and we're all good and whatever. It probably will come with a little bit of, as I said at the beginning of the video, a lot of this, um, you know, hitting up on people's traumas and people thinking, well, you know, this is treating spirituality. I've said this before, treating spirituality as if it's something to check off on your human resume. Covered it. Went, went and spent three years at an ashram. I'm spiritual now, really, because I'm sitting here with you right now and I'm having a hard time not getting pulled into your stuff. Like I feel like you're manipulating me <laughs> right now. And if you were spiritual, you were in your higher consciousness, if you're coming from a place of love, if you're coming from the heart space, that wouldn't be happening right now, right? There's so much more that we could talk about here with this, but I will leave it there. Please leave your questions down below. I can make follow-up videos, whatever it is that you need. All right, guys, I'm sending you so much love and take care.